I'm so glad you're all here. Um, if you could just um, double check that you're muted. And then also I just wanted to note that um, we have the chat open. So if you have a question during the presentation at any point, um, I'll be monitoring that. So feel free to add your questions as we go along. Um, but we'll get started. So my name's Emily Faraka. Um, I am the marketing manager at Arbyte, and I'll just be your moderator for today, um, talking about how to use video for prospecting. So thank you so much for being here. Um, and before I introduce our guest today, I just wanted to do a brief overview of what you're going to be learning. So we're going to talk about why video is effective, um, any logistical things you'll need to get started, so software, um, tools, things like that. We're gonna talk about how to tailor your videos for the channel that you're using to prospect. We're gonna talk about um, an example of a video. So Keith's gonna do a, a live video here for you, which will be really cool. And then at the end, we'll be doing a Q&A. So like I said, please ask any questions as they come up and we'll address them either right on the spot if it makes sense to, or we'll save it for the end. Um, so with that, um, I'm so excited to introduce our guest Keith, so Keith, or KZ, um, is the RDR manager at Gravy. His main focus is to build a rock star team that plays a massive role in helping Gravy return 1 billion back to businesses by 2023. And when KZ isn't writing sales cadences, he spends his time building his personal music brand called It's Wavy. And you can find all of his music on all streaming services, or search KZ Wavy on YouTube for more, which I highly recommend doing. It's a great subscribe. It's a really cool channel. There's a lot to see um, and take in. So I highly recommend everyone go subscribe after this ends. Um, and then like I said, um, my name's Emily. I'm the marketing manager at Arbyte and Arbyte is a communications platform and we're aiming to help, help businesses have more pleasant conversations with consumers. So that's who we are and it's a great fit because Gravy is doing an amazing job of communicating with their consumers. And if you're not following them on LinkedIn, I highly recommend it. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and dive in. And Keith, can you start off talking about why you think video is a valuable tool for prospecting? Yeah, absolutely. Um, first, just want to say thank you to Emily and the team for having me on this webinar. I just want to see who all is in here. So if you're in the chat, can you just uh, type one if you're currently watching right now? Would love to see uh, how many of y'all are listening. Um, awesome. Awesome. We see people in here. Great. Well, thank you for taking time out of your day for this uh, webinar and being with us. And so the overarching question is, why video? Um, I come from a background of marketing and now I'm in sales and I think that marketing and sales go both intertwine with one another and especially with the way the world is right now video and you know digital communication is so key and if you can really become a pro at this you're able to do awesome things. So first things first, why video? I say it is personalized and fun. So for all of you that are watching right now, not sure specifically what kind of role you're in, but when you do create videos in a sales role, it is very fun. You know, a lot of times you can spend your days um, doing manual tasks, creating personalized emails, but a great way to really just break up your day and feel more passionate about your what you're doing is by creating personalized videos. You know, there's so many people every single day, decision makers that are receiving emails and they're receiving a lot of just normal things, but video will certainly help you stand out from the noise. And we're going to be uncovering exactly how you can stand out from the noise. And a lot of people, their first question might be, okay, you're, let's say you're talking to your manager or you are a manager and you're trying to let people know that, Hey, I want to start utilizing video within our current way of prospecting and selling. Why should we do that? Well, I've been able to uncover, you know, from being an SDR myself, from working with a lot of individuals in sales throughout my career, there is a massive return on investment with video. It's literally one of these things where you can communicate so differently and in such an effective way by just turning on the camera and speci specifically speaking to the prospect's needs. And it is just so awesome. And I'm so happy all of you guys are here because we can really get tactical about how we can see that strong return on investment with video. 
Awesome. Completely agree. Um, we use video in a different way at Arbyte um, for content, and we've seen a huge return on investment too. And I always say um, a video on a certain topic can get you 10,000 views as opposed to a blog post that might get only 100. So it's an, it's an incredible tool, and especially um, on LinkedIn is where we primarily see a huge um, return on investment, like you said. So I just have one question on this, Keith. Can you, and you might be addressing this later, but when you say personalized, how, how far do you go with the personalization? Do you do a lot of research on the individual beforehand or do you just use their name and company? Like how far do you take it with the personalization? Yeah, that is such an awesome question. And I also wanna to add to you for the video piece, this doesn't just have to be within sales. This could be communicating with your current customers or people within your direct organization. And so that personalization fee, you know, piece starts from, let's say you're trying to reach out to a prospect. One of the first things that I encourage my team and something that I still do today is just go to their website. And a lot of times with every single organization, they have a why, they have an about section. And when you really scrub through that website, you'll be able to see the tone, the brand, all, all these things, the way that they're communicating with their, their customers and the people people that visit that website. So to have, you know, an advantage when you are speaking with a prospect or even a current customer, you can essentially speak to them and use the language of what they're doing and how they're currently operating. And so when you're reaching out to people from a personalization, it, it can even go to their LinkedIn, um, what you see on their LinkedIn, where, where they went to school, maybe where they grew up. And so for me, you know, I grew up in California and I am very much the kind of person where like, I love good vibes. And I think that you as an individual yourself want to just be unique and in, in, in the way that you are communicating through video. So don't try to be somebody that you're not really just speaking to that person that you're reaching out to because us as humans, I got to say, we love to talk about ourselves. So how can you create a personalized video that is so welcoming and so warm and specific to that individual that they're going to want to respond to you and speak about them and feel like you're not just some random person trying to get their business. You're just an individual that really wants to get to know who they are because at the end of the day, you know, we are just humans communicating with each other. And by having that personalization and just really doing your research, it's going to, you know, create a great conversation. I agree. And I think people are more intuitive often than we think. So when you are being really genuine and authentic, it comes through and people can tell and will want to engage with you. So awesome. Okay. So we're going to move on to, um, what you'll need. So Keith, can you just tell us a little bit about some of the more logistical things that you'll have to um, have in place if you do want to get started with video? So for someone here who's kicking the tires, um, what will they need to get started? Yes, absolutely. So first off with the chat, I want y'all to type a two if you have an iPhone or a laptop or just, a, you know, a camera, uh, something that you can communicate your message. Okay, awesome. We're seeing, we're seeing the chat. Thank Lots you guys. For, yeah, seeing y'all participate. Thank y'all. Um, so just really just broad overview about video. Um, here at Gravy, we are so big about just ship it, right? And what, what exactly does that mean? Okay, so a lot of times when you're creating your first video, you might feel a little nervous. And I, you know, obviously I'm speaking about video right now. And there were times in my life where I was like, okay, this is a little bit scary. Like, should I do this? The only way you're going to get better is just by taking that action and shipping it. So it starts right there using your iPhone or your laptop. And we live in an awesome time where there is something called Vidyard, which is available. It is a free Chrome extension and it will integrate, you know, with your CRMs. We currently use SalesLoft here. I'm actually a previous SalesLoft employee. So um, using SalesLoft for our messaging and essentially I, I love to personally use my iPhone and I literally shoot like this and then I will airdrop it to my computer and then I will import it within my email. So that's the tactical of like essentially the technology. You don't need any fancy camera setup um, from a lighting piece. You want to make sure you're clear, you're visible um, and, and be mindful of what's in your background. I am currently getting ready to move right now. So my apartment has like a plethora of boxes. So thankfully I'm here at this WeWork. Um, and the next thing is passion and good vibes. I'm, this is so, this could be overlooked, but how you communicate 
and how you're looking you know with eye contact and bringing that energy is so important and this eye contact piece is so huge because when you are communicating with a prospect if you see like my eyes are over here or they're looking down you can tell that that individual could be distracted or they might be just a little bit you know not as confident within their video making which is completely okay that confidence piece is going to come over time but making sure that you are doing everything you can to you know bring that energy to discuss what it is you're trying to communicate through that video and keeping strong eye contact is literally going to help you um, be more successful with that love it and i think it's like easy to think if you want to make a sales video it has to be like with a professional grade camera and everything has to be like picture perfect but i think um with that authentic piece that you mentioned earlier sometimes just an iphone quality is totally fine as long as you know the sound is good the background's appropriate and you're just being yourself but i do have a question um so you know you have your youtube series and you're probably very comfortable in front of a camera, but a lot of people are not. So do you have any tips for people who might feel a little bit less comfortable with a camera in front of them, just getting used to talking in front of a camera? Yes, great question. So something that we're currently doing on our team right now and just encouraging one another is to create videos and then share them with your friends. Share them, start with somebody that's close with you that you would feel comfortable getting some sort of feedback um, I think it, especially if you are just getting started out, let's say you watch this webinar and you go back to your team, you're like, hey, y'all, I want to start using video. I encourage you to just create a couple videos and then have a video that you feel like is great for you and then share it with your team and ask for that feedback. You know, we live in such a time where, you know, asking for feedback from people that have done video before or somebody that knows you for you will be able to help you critique and get better. And so a lot of it just comes from really just don't overthink it. Don't overanalyze, um, you know, obviously just look presentable, but we live in such a time where, you know, even I will just break the cycle and I'll go for a walk outside and I'm like, Hey, what's going on? It's KZ here. Just want to send you some good vibes, right? And just being true to who you are is really going to shine and uh, open with that team is going to be great to get better. That's great advice. All right. So now we're going to talk about the steps to take. So you have um, why it's important. You have what you're going to need. And now Keith is going to talk about what steps you can take to get started today if you wanted to. So let's dive in. Go ahead, Keith. Awesome. Everyone uh, type a three in the chat if y'all are still with us. We are about to, uh, we're about to get tactical with it. Awesome. <laughs> Joey, I see uh, Aaron, I see Tom, Anna. Awesome. Well, thank y'all for still being on this journey with us. And so I want to specifically talk about from the sales side of things and how this operates, um, depending on what role you're currently in right now, this can look a little bit different. This could be communicating with a customer that you know potentially could be going into renewals, think, things of that nature. So just keep that in mind. But for what I'm about to talk about is tactical within our current sales team here at Gravy. So what does that daily process look like? So video has a very strong ROI. So historically at Gravy, we were mainly sending um, Instagram DMs. So that's the, how we are communicating with our, you know, our, our, our new customers right now and, and prospects. So we still do a lot of that, but transitioning into LinkedIn and emails and things like that, we've been able to integrate this within our daily process and within our cadences. So obviously we're starting off, we have personalized emails, but it's very important to track that data. So if you're having somebody who is opening your email like 10 to 20 times and you haven't gotten a response for them, yes, you could go ahead and bump that email, but how about take it a step further, right? You know, you could create a brand new email to them that's with a video showing your face being like, hey, I, I don't know what's happening, but it's, you know, I've been able to see that you've been opening my emails. I think it's absolutely incredible what you and your business are doing. Um, and then let's chat about it. So that is essentially tracking the data from your daily sales to-do list and then seeing where people are showing engagement is a great piece of how you can create those videos and how you can operate. So the next step for this is when do you follow up and track the analytics? So whenever you're creating a personalized video, I always encourage our team right now, 
if there is a specific prospect that you can speak to within their niche, like for example, for me, I love music marketing. I love people that have online courses on music marketing. And if I'm prospecting and I see, let's just say Joe is an incredible music marketer, instead of just sending him a templatized, you know, personalized email, I'm going to go out of my, you know, <laughs> out of the cadence step and create a personalized video for Joe. I'm going to say, Joe, I think it's absolutely amazing what you're doing with your music marketing courses. And then I would say X, Y, Z. And then so creating, utilizing Vidyard to have an animated GIF of like you waving your hand and then saying like, hey, Joe, I think you're awesome. You know, here's why. Let me know how this sounds to you. And that's a prime example of just thinking outside of the box and being creative with it. And for all of you guys listening right now, you know, you can take five to eight minutes writing a personalized email, which I still think is valuable and incredible, but you could also take five to eight minutes creating a personalized video, which might even just garner their attention even more than that initial email. And so the third thing I want to discuss right here is with referrals. A lot of times in sales, you're looking for a decision maker. You could reach out to somebody and they come to tell you, hey, I'm not the right person. So instead of you asking them for a warm intro, what you can do is go on LinkedIn or use sales nav, reach out that you know potential decision maker to people and be like, hey, are these the right people to reach out to? And let's say they say yes and you know they confirm it's okay that you can reach out to them immediately that is when you make a video referred by and then you you know voice that within your video like hey i reached out to so and so they said that you would be a great individual to reach out to and referrals more often than not will help you you know especially in sales get you that book call faster than just you know not a warm intro so that's a great tip um i think i would definitely pay attention if i got that email in my inbox so uh, I want to keep moving so we can get to all the questions. So um, let's talk about how to tailor your video for specific channels, because I think this is really important. I know you mentioned Instagram DM is how you kind of started. And I feel like Instagram is so different from email um, mm -hmm. and obviously um, LinkedIn too. So can you just go into how you should tailor your videos mm -hmm. for these three channels we have here? Absolutely. So um, kind of what you mentioned, Instagram is completely different than all three of them. Um, obviously, the same personalization approach is important when you are messaging through Instagram, but there is a lot of there's a lot of SaaS out there. There's so many different organizations that aren't really on Instagram, so they are living on LinkedIn. And so what I encourage all of you to do, so once you're connected with somebody on LinkedIn, you are then able to send them a voice message, you're able to send them a video. And I always build that rapport based on, hey, we just connected here on LinkedIn, would love to chat with you. Um, just really, for us with at Gravy, we don't make it about that meeting, we make it about them, we make it about all of the incredible things that they're doing at their business and, and really just championing them. And LinkedIn is a great place for that. And so the unique part about LinkedIn video direct message is that you have to actually record the video in the app. You can't, you can't upload it. Like you have to actually, you know, do, do your LinkedIn video message. But what I encourage all of you to do when you do send that video message, you put a little chat below it saying like, Hey, um, let me know how this sounds to you. You are awesome because X, Y, Z. And then the other with um, email, which is honestly one of my favorite things. Um, everyone that is listening right now, really get creative with your subject headlines on you know, how you can send these videos. So within our current cadence and things that I've just been doing over the past couple of years working in marketing and sales is did I lose you subject headlines? So let's say you're reaching out to a prospect and they've kind of been ghosting you. For those of you who don't know, uh, ghosting is a thing in sales. You reach out to somebody, you're personalized, you, you know, send your follow-up email cadences and you just haven't heard from them. So did I lose you subject headline? And then there it is with you on a video, um, utilizing Vidyard, you're waving, you're smiling and always just being professional, but more importantly, exhibiting your passion for learning about that business is so, so key. And one last thing I want to harp on about utilizing video is I don't know, you know, if you're watching this right now, you might be looking at a new job or, or maybe you're in the market for that. Video is so key within the current job market today. You know, all of us have, you know, can have a resume, 
But with using LinkedIn, if you're looking at um, a new opportunity, go send them that video message for that job. Go reach out to them. I made a post on LinkedIn about that today, about, hey, send me a video message if you're interested in joining the team. So, Yeah, that's a great tip. It sounds like the key here is personalization, no matter what channel you're on, just throughout the whole process, being conscious of that. Um, but I do have one question because this is actually something that I've run into working alongside our sales team as we try to start using video. So Gmail right now does not have the capability. As far as I know, you cannot embed videos directly into an email, right? You always have to click out of the email. Is that, am I right? So, so that's a great question. So what you can do is go to vidyard.com and get the free Chrome extension and then integrate that within your Gmail. So for the, all of you guys that are listening today, I encourage y'all to go download Vidyard. It is free and it is a Chrome extension. And then you will be able to um, import that video directly into your Gmail um, uh, email that you send out. So that's a great tip. Um, okay. So last thing before we get to your questions, Keith is going to do an example of a video that is converting. So I'm really excited for this part. Keith, you have the floor. We're going to see it awesome. in uh, live. So, go for <laughs> so it. I want to, I want to uh, specify too for this. I can essentially, if I was reaching out to our buy software where Emily works um, and this going off of the tips that we just talked about, about having that personalization piece, championing the prospect, making sure it's about them. Um, I essentially went to our buy software's website and I was just like look, going on their homepage, seeing what they do. And so I would be like, Hi, Emily. It's Casey here from Team Gravy, and I just wanted to send you some good vibes today. I think it's absolutely incredible how you and the Arby team are working together to create hassle-free dialer and phone system for more conversations. And I would love to chat with you more specifically about how we can help serve you and take that worry of failed payments and customer churn completely off your plate as our full-time focus. I'm sure you're crazy busy, but I would love to set up just a quick five-minute chat with you. So what is your availability like? And then I would go into, you know, what days that would be good. And then I would go with urgency because at the end of your video, you want to have that call to action. So if you're able to hop on a call tomorrow or sometime by early next Monday, I'd be more than happy to give you. And then you could give an offer like free DoorDash or you could do like a gift card or something like that. Um, obviously here at Gravy, we have a lot of different call to actions of what we do, but really just going into that pitch of number one, hey, this is who you are. I think you're incredible what your business is doing. Then number two, going into a short pitch about what you do. And then three, that call to action, creating that urgency, regardless if it's the end of the month, it could be the first of the month. So <laughs> awesome. Good job. And I'm telling you right now, if somebody made me a video and said my name and what we do, I would pay attention. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we had someone say, would buy from you, KZ. So great job. <laughs> Um, and I just want to ask one really quick question before we move on, um, that piece at the end where you suggest by creating the urgency and suggesting the date, um, and time. Um, I know sometimes like it's easy to just say like, let me know when you're free or, you know, let me know your availability. Can you just explain shortly, um, like why it's important to suggest those times and create that urgency? Like, and how do you do that without sounding? Cause you know, I am not in sales, but I yeah. would be afraid of sounding aggressive. So can you just describe oh, that? For sure. Yes, absolutely. So, um, really with that call to action, you know, when you are creating these videos and you are prospecting and you're looking to get a book call, especially within the, you know, sales world, um, you have to create effective and creative ways to do so to make the prospect feel like, Hey, this is an offer that I had to jump on. So asking the question of, you know, what is your availability like today? or sometime by next Monday. And if you're able to hop on a call by next Monday, I would love to give you full access to X, Y, Z. So let's say your software, your product has something unique about, you know, the service, you know, working with your sales team about what that offer might look like. And then really just letting them know like, Hey, we're so excited to chat with you. Can't wait to learn more about you. And that urgency piece is so important because a lot of times the end of the month comes in sales and everyone feels urgent, but why not create that urgency the first of the month? Because you always can, depending on who you are as a person. And if you are being authentic and really um, understanding what that organization does or what makes that person who they are, 
they will definitely be able to, they definitely will respond to you. But even if they say no, ask for feedback, you know, Hey, they said they're not interested. Okay. What did you think about that approach? Would love some feedback and then just really uncover their pain points. Cause when someone tells you no, or you're not interested, a lot of times they just might not understand what you're trying to discuss with them. So. Yeah, that's a really good point. I think also if you really believe in the, the product or service that you're selling, um, then you'll believe that the person you're reaching out to would really benefit from it. So that automatically creates the urgency, right? If you're prospecting to the right people. Absolutely. Um, okay, so um, it's time for your questions. We already have one here, but I would love to see more in the chat. So please submit your questions, um, but we'll start off with a question. Um, it's, I'm going to read it. It's an old guy here trying to learn new tricks. Many times I'm older than the people I'm trying to connect with. Um, he said they're generally 20 to 30 years younger. Mm -hmm. So he's curious of the perception of, from prospects, if he does start to utilize video. Yeah, I, I, I think you absolutely should use video. I mean, every single person, regardless of who you are, you have something really unique to offer. And if you reach out to that um, prospect, you know, still go on that personalization piece, but even just, you know, add, add things about you and who you are as a person. And I think that it, regardless of age and who you are, people are going to be like, wow, this individual took the time to really learn about my, my business and who I am, and you will be able to succeed. Yeah, that's great advice. And um, just jumping off of that, oh, how long would you say it takes you to do like a full, like if from researching the company to putting together the video to sending it in the message, what would you say is like the length of time that it takes? I would say upwards to probably like 10 minutes, eight to 10 minutes. Um, depending on how specific and personalized I'm getting. A lot of times with organizations that you reach out to or specific niches, you as a person might know that niche more, more and be more passionate about it. And in those circumstances, it's definitely much faster. So, Right. It's, it would seem like if you get a video, you might think, wow, they really put so much time into this. And of course, you're putting time into it, but not as much as you might think. So Exactly. Um, so yeah, that's awesome. And then I have another question that's more on the logistical side. So with Vidyard, um, are you able to see like the, because obviously we talked about analytics earlier. Are you able mm -hmm. to see um, like how many times people watched it, whether or not they opened it? Does Vidyard give you those insights? Yes, Vidyard actually does. So anytime somebody watches um, one of your videos that you create for them, Vidyard will pull that data and will even tell you the percentage that they watched. So let's say somebody watches 100% of your video, they, you really have a, a great conversation started there if they watch the whole video and they don't respond. So I always encourage our team um, of reps to, if you're not hearing back from someone and they, you can clearly see that they watched and clicked on your video, that is a great opportunity to continue that warm conversation. Maybe then give them a call the next day, you know, they will know who you are. So it makes it warm for everyone and an easier sales process. Yeah, for sure. That's insight that you don't always get um, reaching out in other ways. So that's a great tip. Um, well, it is 1.30, so I want to respect everyone's time. Um, so I'll just wait one more second to see if any more questions come in. All right, we got one. Um, awesome. Okay. So curious about the click rate or play rate with embedded video and email. Is it a link? Are people really clicking links? And this is uh, from the cybersecurity concern standpoint. Yes. So curious about essentially like that click-through percentage rate. Like are people clicking on it? Is that the question? Um, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I have noticed there is a much higher percentage click rate on, um, your video emails that you send. So regard, um, if you're using Gmail, just Gmail as a whole, you might not be able to track those open rates, but if you're using something like sales loft, um, or, you know, another CRM, you will be able to see if that individual not only opened that email, but if they clicked it. Um, and so I personally have noticed for our team in working together, um, that you, that's a massive click through rate. Um, people, you can track and see as soon as they clicked it and they're watching it, it becomes very exciting. Cause you're like, literally I made this video for someone now they're watching it. And now I have an opportunity for a warm conversation. That's a great question. It is a great question. 
Um, okay, so I have a comment here um, and it says, I see a lot of videos from people on LinkedIn walking through their neighborhood. I think I actually follow someone who makes these videos. Um, he's a sales guy and he, he has this series where he just walks through his neighborhood with a, um, one of those, I forgot the name of it, but he holds up his phone and just gives sales tips. Um, mm -hmm. And he, um, this comment mentions that sometimes it can be distracting to see the cars passing, to hear garbage trucks. So do you have any advice for how to keep it authentic, but also, you know, keep people's focus on what you're actually saying, the content of the video? Yeah, absolutely. I think it depends on who you're reaching out to specifically. Um, every single individual that you reach out to could be a different persona. And what that means, if you're, you know, reaching out to someone who might be an upper level executive, you know, obviously, I always think about this and tell my team this, like we were all kids at once too. So it's just like, Hey, we, we all can understand, but I think that it's up to the individual. Like, Hey, if I'm going to go walk outside and these cars are driving by and it's noisy, would this be a good video to send to a prospect? Or should I just go ahead and go somewhere more quiet? Personally, I love recording a personalized video like in front of um, like my blinds or like where good lighting is and I love to have it quiet um, but I think it's just up to the individual ask yourself would this be distracting would this make the person feel like they wouldn't want to um, learn more about what I'm doing so and I think that for LinkedIn or outwardly like just walking and posting a video to, for the world I think that's more okay whereas if you are reaching out to an important individual like you might want to you know, have a clear background so they can just focus on your message. Yeah, I agree. And I think personally for me, like the sound is more important than the video quality. Like if <laughs> I can hear someone clearly, I would rather have that than like a crystal clear video where the sound is choppy or muffled or so I would prioritize sound. That's just my yeah. opinion, but yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I don't see any more questions. And again, um, you know, it's one thirty, so I want to wrap up, but I just want to know really quick that we've been recording this and we'll be distributing the recording um, via email for anyone who registered. So keep your eye out for that. It should be coming in the next couple of days. Um, but thank you so much, Keith, for sharing your expertise with us. I really, really appreciate your time. Absolutely. This was awesome and appreciate every single one of you that is uh, watching and listening and feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, Keith, K-E-I-T-H, Zadig, Z-A-D-I-G. Um, would love to have a conversation and help you or your team when it comes to video. So thank you for the opportunity. Um, and we are so blessed. This was a great time. It was. It was awesome. Thank you, everyone, for your questions and for your participation. It was awesome. And yeah, hope you all have a great day, great rest of your week. And we'll talk to you soon.